now let's talk about the lacrimal drainage apparatus so first of all we'll learn about the lacrimal glands and the drainage system so we have the lacrimal glands there's the main glands and then there's the accessory glands so they will okay, the la lacrimal gland will give rise to lacrimal ducts this is the lacrimal gland and these lacrimal glands drain onto the eyelid here we have something called the puncta p u n c t a which are openings to the canaliculi lacrimal canaliculi and this is the lacrimal sac which drains to the nasociliary uh, sorry nasolacrimal duct which will drain into the nasal cavity that is why So from the nasal cavity, it can go to the mouth. Now, that is why medicine that you put on the eye, the eye drops, you will feel the taste of it in your mouth because of this drainage pathway. Now, the lacrimal glands, they will release the tears. Here's the tears. And that will be spread across the whole eye by the closing of the eyelids. So when the eyelids close, it's going to spread evenly. So now we have part of it which will be evaporated. But the majority of it will go through these lacrimal canaliculi. This is the inferior lacrimal canaliculi that drains around 70%. And the rest is going to come through the superior canaliculi lacrimal canaliculi into the lacrimal sac which will go on to the nasal nasal cavity now let's take a look at this whole process the tear flow pathway i just explained the major part of it so the way in which the tears flow is by capillarity and also by suction so there's going to be the presence of a negative pressure Now, this puncta, let's talk about the puncta. So, they are usually present on the posterior edge of the lid margin. They are present on the posterior edge of the lid margin. And if you are to evert the eye uh, around the nose, you can see these tiny openings. What do you mean by posterior located? You cannot see it when you just normally stare at a person. It is present inside. So, if this is the anterior eyelid, this is the posterior eyelid. Causes of watering. Now, if the above system does not work properly, what does that mean? Let's erase these things. If there is going to be excess lacrimation, the first situation is excess lacrimation. Reflex lacrimal hypersecretion. Now, we talked about that in the previous dry eye chapter. There could be inflammation or surface disease. Let's say the eyelids in entropium is going to touch on these uh, on the eye. That will cause a reflex hypersecretion. The second one is epiphora. That is, the meaning is tearing. So, why does that happen? It is because of a problem in the lacrimal drainage. The first one, let's talk about obstruction. Okay. Let's talk about an obstruction here. Now, the tears are not able to go. They're not able to go. So they will stay within the eye and that will cause tearing. It will cause tearing. The second one is malposition. What does that mean? The puncta is supposed to be on the correct, on the posterior surface. But now because of let's say entropium, ec ectropium, sorry, it is present in a different location. So now it cannot drain properly. Or there could be a lacrimal pump failure. This pump is having a failure in draining to the nasal cavity. That could be due to a facial nerve paralysis, cranial nerve 7 damage. How do you evaluate these patients? So first of all, let me just talk about what you can do. Okay. So you put a tear strip and you ask the patient 
to blink under this blue light. You should be able to see the tears spread evenly across. And then you must examine these patients' eyelids for malposition, evidence of malposition. We talked about that. And then you can watch the drainage happen. We check the dynamics of the eye closure. If this eye closes above the other one, the puncta will be found. Here, let me use a different color. If the eyelid closes above, the lower eyelid closes above the superior one, it can cause the puncta to be present above. So next, the puncta, inflamed, stenosed, or obstructed. What is stenosis? This is narrowing. If the normal opening is supposed to be this thick, there could be some sort of a stenosis which causes the narrowing of the opening. And then the lacrimal sac should be palpated. So you can palpate this lacrimal sac to see if there is any obstruction. And then we have a dye. We will talk about this dye later on. But it's called fluorescein retention test. So you drop some drops into this and you wait for it to disappear. You check, okay, we'll talk about that soon. You check the time for the dye to disappear. If it does not disappear within three minutes, that means there is an inactive lacrimal drainage. Next, probing and irrigation. Now, this is age dependent. You don't do it on babies. But basically under topical anesthesia, you will attempt to enter the lacrimal sac using a saline filled syringe. So what happens is, you put a syringe in and then you push the saline, saline into this and it is supposed to go like this but because of this blockage, the saline might come out again. So, if the saline passes into the nose, that means the duct is patent, that means it's open. If the saline is unable to reach the nose, that means there is a total obstruction. And by doing this, we try to open it by this drainage, we try to, sorry, by this uh, saline syringe, we try to sort of put pressure and somehow try to open this blockage. The other one is a probing. We'll talk about this in this congenital nasolacrimal duct obstruction. Now, the word congenital. The next, nasolacrimal duct. What does that tell you? It's an obstruction in the nasolacrimal duct. That is, here are the superior and the inferior canaliculi. Here's the lacrimal sac and here's the nasolacrimal duct. Now, usually this canalization occurs early on. So, there's a delay in the canalization in this defect. Usually this canal forms to the nose early on. But in some patients, it will be developing either late or it doesn't develop. So what do you do to these people? These people must be evaluated for the presence of either this lacrimal obstruction, nasolacrimal obstruction. The way they present is they have excess steering and they have matting of eyelashes. And the pressure over the lacrimal sac causes reflux of purulent material from the puncta. That means there is going to be purulent materials. There could be a secondary infection. So purulent material such as pus can come out. Now, this is important. These nasolacrimal obstructions present in a very similar way to congenital glaucoma. They present with watering eye. And these patients should be evaluated for that by checking their intraocular pressure. Because these patients will have increased intraocular pressure and a bigger cornea. Now, here's the infection that can lead to pus coming out of the puncta. 
you can see this pus coming out and it's a sticky pus so it can cause tightening of the eyelids when uh, when the baby is asleep and they wake up they find it difficult to um, open the eyelids so what you can do is you can massage the lacrimal sac we discussed that previously to try to rupture the membranous obstruction so usually there's going to be some obstruction which is more of a membranous type so if you do it properly you can okay the first thing is you need to block the common canal okay so what you do is you need to block this by using your fingers because you don't want the pressure to bring stuff outwards this way you want the pressure to push the opening inwards this way so you block it and then you massage massage firmly downwards you need to, uh, the doctor will tell you exactly how but then you should do it several times a day four times a day and each time you must do 10 strokes now you should probe this is what i meant as a baby you don't do that until they're at least one year of age you never put any pro that means you don't put any syringe or attempt anything like this because there's the chance in most of the cases they will spontaneously canalize after probing we put saline labeled with fluorescent and if you can get this fluorescent dye from the pharynx that means you're probing what is probing you put you somehow try to open this this blockage and then you need to give them antibiotics because you have you might have damaged the mucosa and 90 percent are cured from the first probing if there is an abnormal anatomy if, let's say there is some sort of an abnormal anatomy in which okay this is just an assumption so here is a blockage this is no growth from this point onwards what you can do is you can put some artificial drainage system through surgery but it is only done after the age of three to four years of age now what is our topic it's the lacrimal glands so an inflammation due to an infection of the lacrimal glands is called dactrocystitis i just remember it as dactro sounds similar to lacry okay and not a really good way but it helps so there's infection of the lacrimal sac which is secondary to obstruction of the nasolacrimal duct so again here are the canaliculi there's an obstruction here so there's going to be fluid and everything else accumulated here and who else is going to be present here bacteria and that can lead to an infection it could be acute or chronic and the most common causative agent is our normal skin flora such as staphylococcus aureus so these patients have subacute onset of pain usually then there's redness as well and a swelling at the medial canthus so in the medial canthus you can see a swelling and there's going to be tearing these patients will have tearing and the signs is going to be a red tender mass so if you are to take your hand and feel this mass it will feel very tender because it's a fluid filled uh, substance it's not a solid bone like texture and it's going to be red again inflammation and there could be preceptal cellulitis there could be preceptal cellulitis we'll talk about that later that is inside the septa of the eyelids treatment lo local warmth we try to open this drainage and oral antibiotics and if there's going to be pus coming out or if there's going to be an abscess formation which can drain releasing bacteria you can do an incision and drainage now that now i talked about the 
situation in which there's a fa- abnormal anatomy this is the surgery dcr surgery which you can do to create a new canal finally we'll talk about chronic dactrocystitis again long term associated with chronic or recurrent unilateral conjunctivitis inflammation of the conjunctiva signs painless painless swelling remember we didn't talk much about pain here there's going to be subacute onset of pain pain is not a major symptom pressure over the sac commonly causes reflux of mucopyrrolin substance just think of you draining a pimple and the treatment dcr but you never do a dcr until the infection is treated because it can cause endo ophthalmitis that is an infection can spread into the eye it's a very dangerous condition so you never do it till you treat the patient for the infection